right. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started this evening. Hopefully some folks who are trying to get in can, can get in. I'm Amy Mante. I'm Deputy Director for the Department of Planning and also the Master Plan Coordinator. I wanna thank everyone who's joining us tonight. We do have um, some members and representatives from the planning board with us this evening um, and some agency representatives from Rec and Parks, Aging, um, Environmental Protection, and also Government Reform and Strategic Initiatives. So hopefully I haven't missed anyone who maybe came on um, after I was taking tally of that. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to introduce the Director of Planning, Steve Lafferty. Um, he has a few opening comments that he would like to make. Thank you very much, Amy, and thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, this is a continuing effort by the planning department as well as agencies throughout the county to, to gain important input to the issues that we hope will frame our master plan 2030 as we really look forward to uh, really the next decade or longer. Um, tonight's discussion about interwoven equity is uh, important and most critical because equity is, in fact, one of our three key principles that are going to be woven throughout the entire document. Um, and be before turning it over to Amy, let me thank her and thank the various planning staff members who not only are handling the breakout rooms, but also sort of behind the scenes and making this evening and the other previous evenings uh, come together in, I think, a very seamless way so that we can engage the public. And lastly, just again, thank you very much for participating. It's very important to us and to the county executive to have your input. So thank you, Amy. Sure. All right. So um, as I said, thank you to everyone who's joined us tonight. I know we have some familiar faces and maybe some folks who haven't been with us for the previous meetings. Tonight is the sixth of seven meetings that we've been holding in January, and we have another one uh, in February. Tonight, we're going to give you a brief overview of the input that we gathered in phase one, and then we're going to present our draft goals for interwoven equity. And then after that, we will move into our breakout rooms to get input on those goals. So master plan 2030 development is well underway. Through the summer and fall of 2021, the Department of Planning conducted a series of community engagement meetings that were held in different communities throughout the county. The input that was gathered will guide the vision for the county over the next 10 years. We had over we had 50 community engagement meetings. Over the course of those meetings, we engaged with over a thousand citizens and have captured about 4,000 comments related to where those where people see their communities and the county evolving over the next 10 years. The meetings were held across all seven council districts and engaged over 35 various community groups. We asked broad questions about what you valued most or wanted to see changed in your communities. And we also asked where you see the county in the next 10 years. From the input we gathered, the top three discuss discussed categories were land use, economic development, and transportation. And notably, the most engaged groups were located in the western part of the county, Catonsville, Randallstown, and Woodlawn. Also interesting to note, residents expressed the most support for walkability and pedestrian-oriented infrastructure, streetscape improvements, renovated schools, rec centers, and public facilities, green space and parks, developing aging commercial corridors, senior housing and facilities, stormwater infrastructure, small businesses and local businesses, and community engagement and participatory planning. And the most concern for school overcrowding and inadequate facilities, traffic and congestion, overdevelopment, loss of green space, continued threat of climate change, lack of professional and recreational opportunities for young people, and blight or stagnancy in older communities. Now, as we're moving to phase two, we're working internally, not only to review everything we heard from the community the past few months, but also review existing conditions and emerging trends to determine the big ideas for moving the county forward to where we wanna be by 2030. At the heart of this process is the idea that local government should invest more and more thoughtfully in its people and infrastructure. 
Using what we heard in the summer and fall, we've developed draft goals for six master plan topics. The goals are grouped into six categories, livable built environment, resilient economy, interwoven equity, healthy communities, harmony with nature, and responsible regionalism. Each of these groups is led by a community planner with staff support from within the department. So very briefly before we focus on interwoven equity, I want to provide an overview on all the input we gathered over the summer and fall. For livable built environment, we heard about um, the need for trash collection and recycling, code enforcement, ADA compliance, and maintenance of public facilities. We also heard about a need for affordable senior housing throughout the county and support for a variety of housing types. A strong emphasis on stormwater and sewer infrastructure, road paving, burying electric electrical communication lines, as well as expanding high speed internet. We also heard of concerns about traffic and congestion, as well as suggestions for improvement to specific intersections and corridors for improved safety and access. We also heard a need for reform to the comprehensive zoning map process um, and enforce the need to continue to enforce the urban rural demarcation line. Also concerns about the need for tr more transparency in the development process including possible updates to the plan unit development process and updates to zoning regulations. For resilient economy, we heard about commercial centers, improving and diversifying retail options and successfully redeveloping large shopping mall properties. The need to retrofit retail corridors as to offer a change to more auto focused land use and development. Adaptive reuse of vacant or obsolete properties, as well as providing grants for facade and streetscape improvements. And that the county needs to be able to attract large scale job creators in emerging industries. Opportunities to support agritourism. Workforce development that meets the needs for emerging industries in the future. For interwoven equity. We heard about the need to ensure, ensure fairness and equity in providing housing services, health, safety, and livelihood for all citizens and groups. Expanding public venues for arts and culture, performance gathering places that could be used as opportunities for community building. Move for community coordination. Um, residents want to know that their communities are being maintained in a well-ordered manner and are concerned about what the county does with their input and, and the accountability on that part from the county. Uh, public private partnerships between local institutions and community groups should be strengthened. Um, a more accessible internet presence from the county, um, more newsletters or interactive dashboards where residents can gain more news or information um, from the county about services or programs. And of course, historic preservation uh, preserving all all venues of county heritage and history while also looking at opportunities there to spur economic development. For healthy community, uh, there was a focus on the health and well wellness of two specific groups, senior citizens and young people, to ensure that communities remain walkable, accessible with resources that allow for aging in place and recreation opportunities. Um, also, public safety, we heard a lot of public safety concerns, specifically um, from the communities we were talking with at the time as it related to their, their community, not necessarily countywide. Um, but then, of course, we did hear, you know, just overall um, concerns about less crime, more public safety, improved communication with the police department, um, a renew renewed focus on pedestrian safety, especially in certain corridors, and the need for traffic calming. Um, the idea of police presence, providing greater enforcement and lower crime rates. And specific to Randallstown, there were concerns about it being one of the highest rates, having one of the highest rates of sex trafficking in the state. For harmony with nature, we of course heard about Baltimore County's waterfront. The shoreline should be publicly accessible and safe from flooding and erosion. Reforestation, tree preservation and tree canopy um, and the value that they add to quality of life. Plans for impacts to infrastructure, health, and environment related to climate change. For rec and parks, there was a universal consensus uh, among everyone that uh, they would like to have more improvements to the quantity and quality of parks in the county. Um, and that all of those parks um, should have walkability, bikeability, ball fields, greenways, 
conservation easements, all these things should be available to kind of allow people to ma maintain a connection to the natural world. For regionalism, um, we heard about um, the desire to be interconnected with the nearby communities throughout the county, but also outside of the county. Um, there was concern about successes or failures in Baltimore City and how those affect the county, what we can build on um, with shared successes there. Um, and the desire for community members to be able to work together um, to look at solutions for regional issues. So, as I mentioned earlier, tonight is the 6th of 7 meetings that we're asking for your input on our draft goals and for your help in the development of actions to implement those goals. At this point, I'm going to turn the meeting over to. I think David, um, sorry, and part of a team of 3 who have been working on this um, equity topic and they will go through and explain kind of the rest of the evening. Thanks, Amy. Uh, hi, everyone. As we said, um, team of three. So my name is David Birkenthal, and I'm working with uh, Austin Broderick and April Smith. Um, I'll just jump right into it. We've got a lot to talk about tonight. Um, my work group, as we said, is focusing on interwoven equity. Uh, our objective is to ensure that Baltimore County creates just outcomes from planning efforts and other policies through embedding equity into all sections of the master plan and creating standards that each working group will adhere to throughout their individual planning and implementation process. So we've worked to ensure that proposed goals and actions of each master plan group adhere to the following equity standards. Uh, first, um, examine language to un ensure existing and future documents include clear definitions that promote inclusivity. Uh, second, prioritize topics and areas where other municipalities have implemented equity plans, such as housing, food scarcity, food security, and criminal justice, and those suggested during community engagement efforts. Uh, third, ensure that agencies, departments, and planners have the best intended outcome by creating equity affirmations that translate to equity into real life terms for those impacted by decision makers. And fourth, establish benchmarks with appropriate monitoring, evaluation, and assessment components to ensure forward momentum, progress, and accountability. That's all wrapped into the Master Plan 2030 Implementation Plan. So, for those who have attended our earlier meetings this month, it's important to note that tonight will be a little different. Our breakout rooms, in our breakout rooms, we'll be taking a look at the equity objectives for each work group. These broad objectives were developed using the equity standards I just presented and are being used as guides for our goals and actions to ensure that equity issues are sufficiently addressed in Master Plan 2030. We've developed these objectives based directly on the input we heard during our community meetings last summer. So we'll be asking for your thoughts on the following. Uh, first, for livable built environment, um, just equitable access to quality affordable housing, efficient transit, modern infrastructure, and high quality community facilities. Uh, second, for healthy communities, uh, food justice, equitable policing, and criminal justice reform, and equal access to a good education and recreation opportunities. Third, uh, responsible regionalism, Utilizing our partnerships with neighboring jurisdictions to promote equitable policies in a mutually beneficial manner. Fourth, resilient economy, uh, equitable access to good jobs and a fair distribution of the benefits of the growing county economy. And finally, with harmony with nature, uh, environmental justice, clean water and clean air for all, and climate resiliency policies with a fair impacts geographically. So, Emory, if you want to pop to the next slide. Thank you. So, finally, in addition to these standards, we've woven throughout the plan uh, based on the input from the communities this summer, adopt the community plans, best practices, efforts locally and comprehensive plans from around the country. Uh, we've developed these standalone goals for the equity working group. The first uh, concerns with equitable information. This is increasing Baltimore County government's transparency by providing communities with actionable data for equitable decision making to improve access to opportunities for all residents. Uh, second, equitable engagement, uh, creating new standards for equitable community engagement in order to build strong, sustainable relationships and partnerships with all residents of Baltimore County. And finally, equitable capacity building, uh, investing in increasing the capacity of community organizations throughout the county in order to encourage collaborative decision making using an approach that is grounded in principles of inclusion and respects different types of experience and knowledge. Emory, if you want to go to the next slide. Thank you. So, we're going to break out into our groups uh, to discuss these goals with their accompanying actions and then also discuss those equity objectives. 
the goals and supporting actions are presented in no particular order. So let us know if you agree or disagree with these goals and supporting actions, if any actions need to be removed and why, and if we've missed any major actions or goals that should be covered in this topic. Then for those equity objectives, we really want you to think broadly and let us know what you believe are the best ways to address equity for that topic. Uh, you'll each have a moderator assigned to your breakout room who will lead you through the discussion. At the end of the session, we will meet back here in the lobby and we'll present what we were talking about. Uh, we have about an hour set aside for this exercise, but you can come back to the lobby if you finish early. Uh, the first 30 minutes will be used to discuss the three interwoven equity goals. And then the final 30 minutes will be spent discussing the equity objectives for the other Master Plan 2030 groups. Uh, on this slide, you'll see uh, sometimes when you jump into the breakout room, you'll have connectivity issues. Uh, this is a quick uh, directions for getting those um, getting those reconnected, but it's pretty self-explanatory. All right, Emery, if we want to go um, break out into our groups and your facilitators, we will answer any questions you have. Alrighty, folks, I think we're getting down to those left in the lobby who I'll be facilitating with. You can keep hearing my sultry tones. Uh, I see some familiar faces. I, I, I feel like you're my fan club at this point, you do. All right, let me share out our document we'll be using tonight uh, to work through these topics. I know I've got a lot of people in here as well from the county, and then we'll have some people who come in on the phone uh, tonight, and they'll hop in and out sometimes, so we'll just try to work through that. So that would be my script that I just read from. So as always, I know for those who have already been in a group with me before, I just like to emphasize, please um, remain courteous. Uh, some of these topics are uh, a little more controversial and you might have some more to say, but please just remember, um, be kind to one another. If you feel yourself talking for five minutes or um, raising your voice, maybe consider that um, this isn't the place for that. Uh, so I don't wanna have to be the person to say, um, we need to move on or something of that sort. So we'll work as much as we can together to keep this going. Okay, so I'm gonna read this goal, um, this script quickly, and then we'll get right into um, providing some feedback. Uh, so thank you for joining us this evening. This is our interwoven equity group. Uh, tonight we'll be considering draft goals for the interwoven equity section of the Master Plan 2030 and equity objectives for all sections of Master Plan 2030. The interwoven equity section will include goals and actions on equitably making data available, engaging with citizens and strengthening community organizations. As we talk about those goals, uh, do, you think about first, um, generally, do you generally agree with this direction of this goal? Second, uh, do you generally agree with the actions? So we'll go over those as well. And what additional actions should be added? And I can come right back to the equity objectives when we get to those. But again, those are those broader topics I was talking about in the presentation that really relate to each of our, um, each of our master plan groups. Um, and as we scoot in now to the engagement part, I do wanna mention, I've sometimes I do introductions, but we've got a lot to cover tonight. Um, so I'll mostly focus on, um, I'm sorry, I'll mostly focus on, I think each of you will make yourself known and you'll probably provide some feedback. We'll learn a little bit about each other. So I apologize for skipping the introductions. Um, the draft goals, actions, and objectives were developed by planning staff through input provided in phase one of the community engagement process input from other county agencies, best practices, and reviewing the recent work of other jurisdictions. This list is, an, is not in any particular order of importance and is by no means exhaustive. The action examples are listed to get you thinking about the general direction we are going. As you participate, please remember that for this part of the community engagement, we need to be thinking countywide. Okay, we'll spend about an hour on this exercise. Um, so the first 30 minutes uh, will be of those draft goals, the inner order of actions, equity section, then the next 30 minutes will be about those equity objectives at the end of the meeting. Okay. David, can you make the print a little bigger? Can you? Enlarge? Not a problem. You know, I was, I believe um, Steve has shifted out of our meeting. I was a little nervous because um, our boss was in our group and I was like, oh no. So I'm, <laughs> now I'll be a lot looser and more fun. 
<laughs> okay. Oh, uh, that's good. Okay. So scooting in here, um, we've got a pretty big group just because of we're in the lobby, the main lobby. So at the end, we'll have everyone flow back into us and we'll hear that tail end of our conversation. But what I'd like to do is just kind of go over this equitable information. You're all a little spoiled because I did help write most of these. Uh, so I have a pretty good uh, knowledge of them. I can answer so many questions. But this first one, uh, equitable information, increase Baltimore County's transparency by providing communities with actionable data for equitable decision making to improve access to opportunities for all residents. So that sounds like a bunch of nonsense. Yeah. But what we're looking at doing is creating an online platform where community groups can access data that isn't in the form of some GIS file that you have to put into uh, some Esri thing that costs $10,000. We really wanna make um, the data that the county has access to usable by our community groups. And the idea here is that this platform will take shape over the next 10 years, but this is just the, the kicking off point. Um, anyone have any thoughts on these actions here? I can read them out as well for those who I know are on the phone here. Um, but this first one, map and analyze inequities by applying a racial equity lens through maps and spatial analysis to reveal and understand inequities and experiences and outcomes throughout the county. All right, quite a mouthful. And I've been Yes, please. I raise a question about that. The Baltimore sure. Metropolitan Council did a lot of mapping about mm -hmm. opportunities and inequities of opportunity. Um, and they had done that um, across a large number of variables. Um, mm -hmm. The former person who was involved for Baltimore County, Qui, I don't believe is still with the planning office. Yes. And yep. is that information still available? Because it may need updating, but they spent a lot of time trying to look at access to jobs, access to good schools, access, you know, issues related to, right. you know, crime and health. And building on that would be a lot easier than starting from scratch. Should be. So that should definitely should be uh, accessible to us as well. Kui has unfortunately left the county, um, but her work is, I, I find her name on, almost every document I go through related yeah. to data. And if, if you can't find it, the Baltimore Metropolitan Council would have all of that. Right, and we have a good relationship with BMC. So they'll be a great partner to tie in. Thank you. Uh, any other thoughts on this action here? Or if we agree, disagree? Uh, I, I'd like to see the, the data, that's true. But I, instead of having an outreach, having a, uh, uh, an exchange, um, or of an exchange, and that can be quite cumbersome or time consuming or personnel consuming, but I think it's important to have a, a two, two way system to the extent possible. You're looking for feedback on, on the maps that are generated? Well, or, or, yeah, a response from community and, and you know, you, you, you have the data that you're going to make available. But then you really need the feedback and the and an ongoing conversation about these issues to get it right. And then Amy, I can see you speaking, I think, but we can't hear you. Amy Menzer. Okay, I don't know. All righty. If you have, Amy, I can't tell if you're talking to me or not. So if you have feedback, you can put it in the comments and we'll copy and paste that later. Apologies. Um, okay, moving on then. I'll go to the second goal. Uh, create an online interactive tool that geographically highlights demographics and disparities mm -hmm. in infrastructure and service distribution within the county. Uh, this tool would provide valuable information to county leaders to advance a more equitable county while helping citizens hold decision makers accountable. Any additional thoughts on this um, or even what kinds of data uh, might be helpful uh, to you as a community member to know a little bit more about? Schools, crime, health. I mean, there's a broad uh, access to decent transit, job opportunities. There's a lot of variables. That's the, the challenging part about this. Right.
can't, can't spell tonight. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, whoever said that. Awesome. Fantastic. The old Verizon commercials. I just think it needs to include, well, race is hugely important and very overlooked in the county. There are other kinds of equity maybe we might want to consider. Oh, okay. Such as people with disabilities. I see, yes. Actually, income diversity. Uh, I realize that's not going to work. Across the board, but a lot of the BMC work and the conciliation agreement has to do with concentrations of poverty. So, thinking about incomes is probably important. Um, I'm sorry. I apologize. I joined this meeting late, so um, I don't know if the if anybody can talk and jump in or. Oh, yeah. it's just me. And then you have to listen to me for an hour and a half. No, no, please. <laughs> I, I was going to add um, to the data that would be useful. Um, uh, internet. Oh, um, yes. high speed internet. Um, access to food. Um, and um, I was second transportation. Mm. And absolutely on. Um, uh, focus on um, looking at people of color and their circumstances um, that are different compared to the the largely white um, districts in Baltimore County. Can can I ask? This isn't one of the actions, and tell, please tell me if I'm taking this off topic. But oh. I know in Montgomery County, they have a law that requires all legislation um, done in the county include a racial equity um, impact statement. Yeah. Okay. Something like that would increase um, transparency enormously. I would think. But maybe that's not this. No, I'm very, very good at facilitation, so I can handle <laughs> anything you've got to say. <laughs> you said an equity impact statement. Yeah, it's racial equity. I think they racial. call it racial social justice and racial equity impact statement and all legislation has to um, include it um, and it has to be shared um, so that they understand the impact of all legislation on um, people um, who are minorities or are disadvantaged in some way. And I abbreviate MoCo, so it's clear that I'm from Maryland. Yeah. <laughs> all righty. I, I think that's okay. a helpful thing in terms of legislation. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting also to think about that in terms of budget. I think one of the challenges is there are never enough dollars to do all the things that the county would like to do. And equity is something that should be considered heavily as budget decisions are made. How are those, How what kind of feedback are you building into the system? to get from those communities that are unjustly or in, uh, inequitably uh, treated. So I can tell you, and I, I, I should move on as a little bit as well, even though I do like talking about this. Um, with the Equity Atlas model, uh, it's really partnering with uh, community organizations that are already doing this work. Um, okay. It's an important part of highlighting um, some of the good work that's already been do done. Um, we have a really great um, diversity, equity, inclusion department in the county that's uh, new under uh, all, I'm not going to pronounce this, all, all Jeshki. I can't. Um, I apologize. But we have this really great department and they have a lot of community contacts. Um, and the hope is that we can build that trust to um, have some of that data put on our platform 
And then I, I like the idea of considering it less a platform and more of an exchange. Mm, good. Um, so that idea of how having that feedback, not just like you put it into a feedback box yeah. on some website, yeah. but really yeah. having a, they can call up David and ask him to like put this new data online. I, I will say though, that um, I have reached out to the diversity, equity, inclusion advisory group mm -hmm. about um, their community meet meetings. They have two functions. One is internal within the government, right? To right. address um, equity inclusion. And one is about community. They don't meet often and they don't have any sort of power to make any sort of real changes. Right. They don't influence policy, um, so I'm not sure. And the when I've reached out and asked for, you know, to hear back from them, I'm not gotten it as a community, you know, as a citizen. So I'm not sure that that group is really functioning as a board um, more or more as just a performative group. Not to be too harsh, but I'm no. I'm not convinced that that they're actually they're not functioning like Montgomery County's um, racial equity committee that meets regularly and actually make you know influences legislation and makes changes. You think they should be? Mm -hmm. Okay. To enact change and connect, enact change and pass change in policy. Okay. Does that seem to reflect what? Yes. Okay. Thank perfect. You. All right. So I'm going to hop down, but I know this is I'm I'm going to be too excited to talk about this if you bring it back up. But please feel free to, and I'll jump right out. <laughs> So this next one, equitable engagement, uh, I said I was excited about the Equity Atlas idea. I'm even more excited about this one. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun tonight. So this equitable engagement as we're creating new standards for equitable community engagement in order to build strong, sustainable relationships and partnerships with all residents of Baltimore County. So that, Agreed. again, some boilerplate language that really means we need to take a better look at what the county does to engage with community members and largely community groups. Um, how are we really allowing them to impact uh, the decision making processes at the county and what can we do that's what, what how can we update from the models of like, let's have a community meeting right. to more um, 21st century techniques. So, let's just work right through these a uh, actions. Um, these 1st to uh, broaden outreach and low support of participation of color immigrant and refugee communities and low income residents and community outreach and public engagement processes. And then develop a policy that reflects how communities prefer to be engaged. Those really go hand in hand. And of course, this list is not inclusive. Um, or not ex there's more that needs to add to that list. Um, but this idea of working with people about how they prefer to be engaged rather than us saying, you know what, we've got a meeting, it's January 31st at 6 p.m. Be there, be square. Uh, so we're excited about that as a new strategy for the next uh, 10 years. Are there any thoughts and comments on that? And again, I'll, I'll take a big thumbs up as well. I got two big thumbs up running that down. Two. I, I, I'm in thumbs up, but I also think, okay. um, particularly in the era of COVID, we're doing so much via Zoom. A lot of communities don't have good access, you know, to Zoom meetings, um, don't maybe have the equipment or the skills or the telecommunications. So um, I guess I, I would hope that you'd look at different strategies to try and test out what works the best. Sometimes there may be leaders in the community uh, or religious leaders who may be able to help advise. Um, it's not the same thing as broad participation, but um, again, I think you have to be flexible and try different approaches and see what seems to work best in different communities. And to improve the vocabulary of talking to people. What does that mean? Including Jamie? us. Well, it's, it tends to be very academic and abstract and it needs to be clearer. I would suggest possibly focus groups or a, a 
a kind of a meeting that is a conversation rather yeah, than exactly um, yes exactly yes people in chairs and they're getting up and going to a microphone etc you get it yeah 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 focus group conversation Um, another thing I might say is that um, if you want to do ha, encourage public engagement, say with the county council, um, you have to be careful how you allow participants to engage in those meetings. Like right now, um, if you're giving testimony at a county council meeting, your your image doesn't show up. <laughs> and you're not yeah. given an order in which you're called. So you basically don't, there's no sense of community. Um, you're a black box that's speaking to people who can't see you or interact with you. Um, it's very, very much the opposite of engagement. Let's engage at music to my ears. I yeah. have many comments. Uh, because I'm a councilman, Izzy Patoka. Hi, Izzy. Oh, hi. <laughs> because one we of get the to see his face. One of the things that's new is that if you are uh, in the, at a council meeting remotely, you can actually communicate with council members mm -hmm. by chatting to all. Mm -hmm. And um, where in the pre-COVID environment before WebEx, you couldn't really share your thoughts with everyone in the room. Now, there are um, there's some benefits to that, mm -hmm. and there's also some things that may not be beneficial. Right. Um, and council members respond differently. Mm -hmm. you know, ordinarily, um, we can't read people's minds that are attending a meeting, but when someone chats to everyone in the room, everyone can read their mind. Right. So, yeah, there are, there are pros and cons for sure. But I think especially for people who maybe haven't had engagement with their um, government um, or are new to it, it could be very off putting for the first time you come and try and do a test of, you know, testimony to like not even have your face shown, <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, I understand your point. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, yeah. I don't know that the, what the answer is, but. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what the answer is either too, because I, I think, you know, the, the council has traditionally had meetings in the middle of the afternoon and right. many people are working and, right. you know, it, it, it's just, it's very hard for people. And I know it's hard for the council. You don't always want to meet on a, you know, a seven o'clock in the evening, but that's certainly a time that's more accessible for a lot of people. Especially well, people who are impoverished or who have, you know, to work schedules, um, right. they have to work during the day. Well, I think we've made some progress in that regard by pushing it back a little, mm -hmm. a little later. Okay. Well, thank you, Councilman, for being here as well. Sure. My pleasure. I'll be on my best behavior now. <laughs> uh, if not, I'll chat up the room. <laughs> what did Steve want me? <laughs> so this next one uh, about fostering trust by increasing accessibility, community meetings, and facilities and services, while expanding opportunities to become involved with county plans, processes, and initiatives. Once again, very broad, and I think it needs to be defined a little yeah. bit more. But yeah. can we think of some ideas about how best to do this um, very quickly? As we as you can see, we've got a few things to move through. It's a broad topic. Well, maybe annotating some of the issues for people before the, the meeting so that uh, they have some idea of, of what's what the county's spin on it and uh, what the issues are. I'm going to put that down here and beneath this uh, published statements of purpose prior to meetings. Um, and I'll explain that in just a second. Yeah, well, annotate the issues a little meat on the issue idea I 
actually, why don't I, I feel like this one's a little bit too broad to get too much engagement on. Yeah. Why don't I jump down to this well, number four? Another thing I was going to say on three, sure. which was um, the master plan is always going to be a challenge because it's very broad and has lots of long-term goals. Right. And even if somebody is engaged on a master plan or the community plan or the rec and parks plan, uh, there needs to be feedback. There needs to be reporting because you know, none of these plans get just magically implemented overnight. And I think it's one thing to expect people to engage about a community plan or a master plan, but they need to be kept in the loop in terms of, you know, budget priorities and what, what actually is getting implemented. You know, it's, it's just, it's very frustrating when people do engage and then never have any idea whether anything gets affected. Describe it as a black box problem. Yeah. Shouting into a well. <laughs> Just, I'm going to steal that. Jay. <laughs> that I will definitely be saying. All right. So the second, this fourth one, publish statements of purpose prior to community engagement efforts, including all meetings where community members may give input, detailing the specific impact that the input provided by community members will be incorporated into decision making process. There needs to be a how in there. Uh, the general idea is that a lot of times we talk about outreach to the community and we think, how do we get best on Twitter? How do we get best on Facebook? That kind of thing. But it might be more useful to have clear statements about how your input will be a, uh, will influence county decision making processes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that idea of how do we get people to understand that if they come to this meeting, it's really going to be impactful. But this meeting is really just we're reporting on the budget and nothing's going to change. Mm -hmm. um, so I like that what we said earlier, John, about annotating the issues prior to the community meetings. Yeah. Yeah. David, one thing that the Baltimore County Public Schools has put in sure. recently, which has been which has gotten a lot of positive reception, is a summary of what happened at each board meeting. The five or six highlights of anything that was passed. Um, and they're very simple and simple in their language. But the summaries are very informative. They can be shared on Facebook. You you know, and of course they could be they could be put in Spanish as well. And oh, yeah. it's just one more way for communities to know what's happened. That's a great point. That's very good. Any other thoughts on this topic? I'll slowly but surely move forward. All right, seeing none. This other one, conducting an equity review of Baltimore County's development review processes, processes and develop recommendations to increase equitable engagement in community input meetings. Uh, for those who don't know, equity reviews are kind of a modern tool that a lot of counties undergo uh, to, to look at one issue that is actually internal to the county government and try to figure out where um, sense of it and equity have shaped uh, the difference. So this is looking at really the development process and where it's like longstanding inequities um, affecting everything. So this is more or less saying, let's let's produce another report um, using some of that data. Not so, to be blank. What would, what, give us an example. I mean, a lot of times sure. if you're looking at the the development review process, most of the development is in areas that have higher opportunity because that's where the developers want to build. Um, right. We need more developers to be willing to go into the older areas and redevelop, whether it's strip shopping centers that aren't doing well or older housing or older industrial properties. Um, are you thinking that there is a problem um, in the in the older areas that needs to be addressed? I mean, I, I guess I don't really think there's enough development action in the areas that lack opportunity, we need to promote redevelopment. It's not so much that the reporting is bad. Well, and right. you specified the CIM, uh, and that's where uh, people come to to raise issues or raise questions or ask questions. And uh, a number of the ones I've been to, they don't get any responses. They get, thank you for your question, next question. Uh, so- right. That so I'll really jump in needs. now and just say, 
one of the things with an equity review, I don't want to speculate as to what it will look into, but one I did um, what, at some time ago in Charlottesville, Virginia, kind of took an interesting take on development review and really looked at historical um, historical investment into sewage lines and how that affects development in certain communities and the ability to actually add affordable housing in certain places. Um, so it's stuff like that that I, I don't want to say like we don't think about it as above our pay grade. Um, but sometimes with an equity review, you'll bring in a consultant who has done a few of these and then you'll go back and forth with them, work with the community members uh, to have a better idea of what um, to look at next. And I don't want to promise anything with just this goal in the master plan, but that's generally the idea. Okay. Okay. How about I, I uh, move on along to yeah. this idea of a toolkit? Because I think it might make a little clearer what we're looking at. Okay. So I'm not going to read all of this, the paragraph here. The general idea here is, as many of you probably have known, if you've engaged with the county, with anybody who isn't me and my lovely, uh, my lovely techniques and facilitation, Sometimes it can be difficult um, to work with different community groups or community groups to work with different county agencies. So this toolkit is the idea um, of putting together a list of practices that every county uh, department can engage in and having a way to have a back and forth with the community. So fulfilling that, uh, that promise of asking the community how they wanna be engaged with. Uh, again, this one, I don't know um, what the, if it's a great time to tell us exactly how you want to be engaged with, because I think it is pretty broad, but if anyone has any thoughts on that, I'd love to hear them as well. So I think making procedures and processes a lot more user friendly for if you're a small business and mm -hmm. you need to um, get licensed. Um, how do you do that sort of that? just all of those processes, you know, if you're going to renovate a building, how do you do it? Like what, I'm not, sorry, not that, but what, you know, what right. are the steps with the county that you have to follow? Um, and just some more user-friendly, if you are a community organizer doing outreach and you needed to explain this to people who don't, because the way often these processes, they seem a little bit more like, well, if you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't, you sort of have to really translate yeah. it for yourself, and and that can be really intimidating for um, businesses. And then they either don't get the permits they are supposed to be getting, or the licenses they're supposed to be getting, it's, or it's just it's just a it's a barrier to applying for financing, et cetera. Right. You get it. So you said a lot there. This comment I wrote here. Um... Are there any, I know that's definitely a lot shorter than what you said. Does that feel correct? Yeah, small businesses or, you know, rent, if you're going to do, you know, renovation on right. a building, what are the steps? So it could be for a mm -hmm. homeowner who, or home buyer who wants to renovate their house to, are there other rules that they should know about that they should be following? Um, just Yeah, so the, so the county feels to the uh, right. in, investor like they're there to help him get through the process rather than just that they have the right of first of first and last refusal yes. on something just like more customer service orientation right yeah. exactly yeah. exactly um. how do we make this happen service orientation All right, y'all. I'm going to skip over this one because I do need to get to this capacity building so we can um, scoot along. Just so this is more or less says whatever we develop here for this toolkit should be reviewed annually to make sure it's still up to date. Okay. So equitable capacity. Oh, what did I say? Oh, okay. Well, continuously, <laughs> like like zoning, everything right, gets... Right. Continually upstated, yeah. So with this equity equitable capacity building, we're looking at working with community organizations uh, to make sure that those organizations are also able to engage with us in the fullest way. We can go only so far sometimes, and it's best that if we're also helping uh, people on the ground, 
being able to build up their community organizations. Some parts of the county don't have your traditional community association. And then there are non-traditional community source organizations that haven't really engaged previously with the county in this way. So I'll jump right into the actions. I think we've got a better idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, so action one, expand outreach to encourage registration of community organizations in Baltimore County in order to provide up-to-date contact information that is available to all community organizations, leaders, county staff, county officials, and other parties interested in partnering with community organizations. In the past, that's a mouthful, but in the past, we've had difficulties about putting contact information up online, though the ability and privacy is changing, yada, yada. Our hope is that if we have a, a list of the community organizations, if people need a contact, they can uh, reach out to us and then we'll be able to provide it to them in a more efficient manner, um, rather than putting something up online that never gets updated and is, it says who was in charge of <laughs> Ryder Wood in yeah. 2006. That's a very specific incident that did occur to me. Um, Okay, any thoughts on this um, issues with privacy any concerns or benefits that this might have. David, if, can I offer a comment? Yes, who is that? This is Izzy Patel. Oh, yes, of course. So, I think the county needs to be proactive. In expanding outreach, okay. because right now right. it's reactive. So, what I mean by that, if let's say. Sudbrook Park, my the community where I live, doesn't actively go in and update the database, mm -hmm. then the president from many years ago will be listed. And um and a neighbor might not be able to find that president because, for example, Melanie Anson, who was a warrior for Sudbrook Park, she she did many things that helped this community uh to be a strong community. Um she, she some people associate her with Sudbrook Park, but she lives in, in the city in Tuscany, Canterbury, to be near her kids now. So, and that's just an example. And now we have an outstanding president, Dean Rundell, but unless we go into the database or contact planning, I'm not sure exactly how it's the logistics of it, that the database will be old. And so I think the county, through its resources, through all of the departments, not just planning, but all of the departments being active in the community, uh, trying to uh, to gain that information of who is the president this year of the community association we're working in, rather than waiting and waiting and right. waiting for somebody to update the database. So you're not talking about a, just a database, but also a data exchange. Yes. Not, Good data Good data not just a platform, just yes. Right. Data exchange. Okay. I think that's good. If anyone has any other thoughts, I'm going to start trying to move through this so we can get to some of those equity. Um, oh, God. Some of the other topics. Um, so. These next two are about um, establishing small grant programs. Uh, the first is to create small one time initiatives and projects. These are what I call capacity building projects. Those like four or five, six thousand dollar projects uh, that community organizations do, and they provide a nice benefit. But more importantly, they help pull people together and help getting people know what kind of skill sets are available in the county. So these often look like trail cleanups. They look like river cleanups. Um, putting up a sign, that kind of thing. And then the second one is um, a grant program explicitly for actual, what we would consider formal capacity building. So that's something like growing your mailing list through purchasing data, or maybe even starting a website up, uh, just helping community organizations get off the ground. So that's part of that data exchange. Yeah. Can, can I mention, like, I mean, since we're talking sure. about equity, um, what about focusing on trying to help community organizations get started in areas um, where there are low income or people of color or other disadvantaged groups? Started. Because otherwise, I mean, if you're just more affluent neighborhoods are, are more likely to have very active <laughs> community associations, right? Right. 
Neighbor Space of Baltimore County has worked with a number of communities where Neighbor Space may have a small public open space, trying to help mm -hmm. understand what the community wants, but they have had the same issue. And so they had a grant that they were using to help set up a website for some of these community organizations mm -hmm. and help them then better communicate with the rest of the neighborhood, because usually there's one or two or, you know, sometimes more active residents, but they don't have a formal organization or a formal website. And, and, and certainly I think there's some grant programs that can help do that. Um, and that's one model anyway. Okay. I'm thinking about, you know, Baltimore Community Foundation has these community mm -hmm. mobilization grants that county neighborhood groups could be applying for, but I think the, the issue is sort of, it, it's the issue of who's, who's actually going to apply and, and right. how can we support right. um, less affluent communities to um, participate and apply, whether it's a county, a new county grant program or some other program. Um, and then uh, there's also the issue of, you know, within a neighborhood, you may have a diverse range of people, but for one reason or another, the folks who are more likely to show up at a neighborhood association meeting and be heavily involved may or may not be the most diverse group of people, um, in my experience anyway. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I don't know, the county's role in that is is tricky, obviously, but um, I think supporting neighborhood associations in navigating racial and ethnic change transition in their neighborhood and thinking about ways to, you know, and that could be trainings or, you know, some other kind of support um, for people who want to try and get a more diverse group of people involved and thinking about how to do that uh, because a lot of our Older neighborhoods are certainly facing those transitions, and I suspect yeah. the leadership of an individual neighborhood association may not really reflect what's going on. It's, it's there's you know so, mm -hmm. and it may not it's not may not be that they want to exclude anybody. They just don't know how to go about it. Furiously typing. That was very good. It's a very good group, and I, I feel like it's hard for me to compliment y'all in, in a real manner, but I really am enjoying this. Does this here, what I've written, reflect that? I think that was a really good comment. I, I tried to summarize it as best I could. Yep. No, you're good. Thanks. Fantastic. So speaking about some courses or classes we could do, um, one thing that Baltimore City does is this idea of a citizen planning institute. The As you all know, zoning regulations, planning, it's all a little confusing, especially if you've never engaged with it before. Um, so this is uh, a project that Baltimore, Baltimore City has been doing uh, quite rapidly, and it's recently been recommended to us by a consultant's efficiency review report to maybe do something similar. Um, so Baltimore City's program, I, I won't get too in depth into it, but the basic idea is that you use a county staff and a little bit, a little bit of county staff time to teach small cohorts of community members um, more information about how the planning process works and then over successive times it's not a one-stop shop it fixes everything but over a course five six years you get a whole cohort of people 300 400 people who have gone through this training and can be both resources for the county to reach out to to help explain things to their neighbors um, but also can help keep the county in check um, because they know what's going on and they can uh, see what kind of changes are being made that was my really positive pitch for it, but I'd like to hear any comments you have for any positive experiences with something like that. Well, some form of that was has gone on for years with the community uh, community plans uh, yep. because it involved community planners going into community, working with the community, and jointly putting them together for the most part. Uh, and so that's probably something to build on. And there are people out there who have been involved in those for better or for worse, uh, you know, in terms of their experience that should be people you should touch base with. Okay. 
I think the problem with the community plans is usually the community plan, once it's done, gets put on a shelf and it doesn't get really implemented and then you lose people. So it's funny you say that because I did accidentally skip this fourth goal here, which is about the small area planning processes and the hope in the next 10 years that a lot of these are going to be redone. Redone. Many of them were done in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. Sure. The problem is getting people to engage to, to update them is a challenge, particularly if they were involved originally and they didn't get updated. So part of the strategy needs to be thinking about how do you focus those into achievable goals as opposed to something that is too pie in the sky and doesn't get realized. Or since we're, we're talking about equity, um, focusing on the neighborhoods that are most in need, right? Yeah. I mean, we can't do everything for every community, but there are right, communities right, 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 in right. Baltimore County that are suffering, um, who do not have the resources that a lot of um, other other communities do have. Right. My suggestion was really just to touch base with people who I, have already been yeah, through the process. Right. I'm sorry, didn't was not meant as a criticism. No, no I understand. I, it, but uh, to clarify it, it just, there are some people out there. And of course, then previous administrations have said, we don't want to pay any attention to the community plans. So that's a little disheartening. And some of those uh, wounds need to be healed too. Right. That'll, the, yeah, that'll take some work to rebuild a sense of trust and belief yeah. that, that this is at all like mm -hmm. serious. <laughs> um, right. Number five, right. I would also, I, I think that what the city is doing as far as a leadership program is great. And I think that you know, a lot of some of our most active community associations, not only are they, you know, they may be all white or they're, they're old. <laughs> the leaders are older. Right. And so it's right. just, um, it's really important um, to build that capacity. Yeah. And, and I wonder, you know, as far as training goes, it wouldn't have to be all or, or one, like, just one intensive long training like what about short like a lot of um, advocacy groups do a once a session like for the maryland general assembly they'll do mm -hmm. once a session like a three-hour boot camp for people who, to understand the process like if you did that regularly people could you know jump in and and learn at least enough to know how to ask intelligent questions or i don't know no i think that's one thing that's all I can say has been considered is also just putting the resources out that you would use in a uh, in a, right. a course like this, just making them available online. Right. Or record some recordings. Right. Right. Yeah. I'll say or Maybe. recordings, even though that was my idea. Based, based on your comment about community associations being older, I think it was Amy that said that. Um, oh, yes, please. Councilman, uh, you've muted yourself. It's just an observation, but it seems to me that and th there's a disconnect because typically young parents are more involved in their PTA and they don't get involved in their community association until their kids are gone. Mm -hmm. And then they transition that, um, that drive for action from their PTA to their community association. And so there's kind of a disconnect from those two groups in many, not just in Baltimore County, but kind of in, in most uh, jurisdictions. So I wonder I think, I in, think terms right. a, uh, in terms of equity, how do you connect those younger families with that are involved in their PTA with who then become active in their community or you, that the county planning needs to be actually reaching out to the PTAs where the young people where the young parents are right. and, and making sure that there are some opportunities to I mean I get it they're there for a different reason but yeah. um to, to ask some questions to folks in the in the room that they're in so to speak right because the role of um the PTA is parent education about the community itself. So the collaboration is is really natural between community associations, you know, the county government and PTAs. And I think Izzy's comment about about that pattern is is accurate. 
things. That's a really good point, everybody. I like the idea of having uh, little short vignettes maybe online, our own local YouTube uh, on specific issues in the planning process. Topics. All right, you know, that all sounds like a lot of work, so we might need somebody uh, to help with us at. So that's the final goal. Let's see the transition I just did. Uh, only the best here. Uh, so number six, uh, hire an equity and inclusion planner to administer community organizations, community organizations and leadership development programs, oversee new equity planning efforts, conduct regular equity reviews, development review procedures, and implement the equity goals interwoven throughout Master Plan 2030. In short, that's everything we just talked about. Right. Being put in, you need somebody uh, on the team to do that kind of work. Um, so this is a thought, the title of equity and inclusion planner, um, it's common uh, throughout, that's not set in stone, but everywhere from Montgomery County to DC to Baltimore to, we spoke with York County up in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. um, and they have an equity and inclusion planner. So this is really the next step for a lot of organizations. So any thoughts, can, uh, comments on this? Well, I, I think that the equity inclusion planner needs to also be a trainer because mm. that's a big job. Baltimore County is a big county and to have one person be responsible for all things related to equity right. yeah. uh, and inclusion is pretty rough. So hopefully over time, this person who has the expertise could educate the rest of the planning staff and also probably staff from other departments. I mean, you have the same equity issues that are being challenges for you know, whether it's the school system or rec and parks or you know yeah access to all silos everybody everybody is going to be needing to do a better job on this so they could start off training the planners but then they could be also doing some training with other agency staff how how would that position relate to the current um i can't remember troy williams's title but right. he is the the uh, equity inclusion chair or yes so um, this would definitely one Troy would be included in this hiring process i mean i, I talked with Troy about but, this about a couple of weeks ago but i mean does, oh, yeah, is that not redundant to what he's already doing and could could he just have more staff you know i mean i think not staffed yeah. <laughs> Again, I don't want to promise anything with anything in the master plan, but I think with a position like this, there's a good chance it might be in his department, but it's I somebody see. who is um, trained as a planner and it has the technical yes. specifications as like a planner too, is what the, yeah. yes. the county calls it. And but I think then, you, so want that, you want that expertise within each department. If you put it in a silo, then all the departments end up saying, well, that's not right. my territory. I don't have to think about it. And that, that particularly for planning, but for many of the other agencies, it's something that they right. need to integrate. Okay. I like the idea of it. I think, yeah, the issue of, is there someone in planning department or is they, where are they? I think that's a real issue as well. So don't know. I'll say for just to be, they can include be in the department of planning or housed planning or housed in DEI. Okay. All right, folks. So I've kind of extended us about 15 minutes after um, they told us to switch the other ones. But <laughs> I, was, I was more interested in these only because uh, the council was here and also I helped write a lot of these. So we had fun. <laughs> so what I'm going to shift to now, these equity objectives we were talking about, the basic idea here is that with every or with every one of our work groups, um, we have the inter this interwoven idea of equity about how do we incorporate that into our decision making. And what we've got here is just some broad categories that I it's almost like a free association of what would you consider an equitable goal uh, for this category. So we've got a good group that they're willing to, you're clearly willing to say whatever you like, whenever you want to. So this is that time, um, please just within this category of the livable built environment, which for those who are on that meeting is a pretty inclusive topic, basically around structures and other development planning that occurs at the county. And we've kind of narrowed down to the main equity objectives for this topic are gonna to be affordable housing, efficient transit, uh, modernizing infrastructure and high quality community facilities, I, equitable access to all of those 
for. So not just those, but making sure that throughout the community, people have access to these top to these four. Are there any others that we think should be incorporated into this list? I think job opportunity and okay. access to training opportunities is going to be really important for some areas. Okay. Do you mind if I save that for the, we have another section that's going to be on the uh, okay. resilient economy. I, okay. I hate telling someone not to say something, but yeah. Okay. How about green space? Okay. Um, parks. Mm -hmm. Space and parks. Okay. Any other thoughts? And I think that's a really good uh, addition. That's definitely something that's tied in here. As Could well. we add uh, the word public to green space? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To exclude yeah. country clubs. Yeah. Yeah. Also, getting <laughs> off my lawn is a big part. <laughs> what about what about air quality and water quality? I mean, yeah. I don't know enough about data, but my perception is, particularly in the city, but even in parts of Baltimore County, the older areas may have air and water quality problems. I say, uh, I know we've got that included in the environmental section, but I think it's the water quality infrastructure is a really good one to include here. Mm -hmm. If that's okay. Yeah. Infrastructure. And that will be, I guess. Yeah. Those are two good ones. Any other thoughts on this? I guess not. My, my, my only thought is the, the, the process of communities want to know where they fit in any change that goes on. And that's a process goal that we talked about in the first section. But, uh, I mean, that should be an objective too, to any, uh, equi to equity, because it's equity of understanding. Development, I like that. Nice, thank you, autocorrect. Okay, so I'll keep moving along here. We've got four other ones to cover, and then we can jump back again if anyone's interested in doing so. So this next one, harmony with nature, as I said, um, those big topics that we're thinking about, um, as these are the main equity objectives, are going to be your environmental justice, um, clean water and clean air for all, and uh, climate resiliency uh, policies with fair impacts geographically. I'll just briefly on that last one, there's concerns about if you put up a retaining wall, um, does somebody get flooded and somebody doesn't? That's very um, vague and not exactly specific enough, to, but that's the general idea of not having. Oh. oh, okay. So any thoughts on this topic of other things that might need to be included here? I feel like I was a little unspecific. Um, is, is this the section where like addressing issues like the redevelopment of security square mall, for example, would make sense? Like there, there's the lack of attention to, um, environmental problems that creates a sense of, you know, decline or, or disrepair. Um, so it's not just focusing on some things, but like also not ignoring I don't know if I'm I'm articulating that right. I think the word the planning term, the annoying academic planning term is dilapidated. There you go. Um, yeah. To, and that also has a real environmental impact right. because of, you know, runoff and Science. all sorts of yeah. different issues. So down here I can write. And again, I, I, so I hate putting words in people's mouths. David, while you bopped back to the last one. Yes. I think there's access to affordable housing, but I think the opportunity to build wealth, uh, mm -hmm. and if housing is poverty or you know affordable housing is too concentrated, then you know people have far less opportunity to build wealth. So, um, does how about diversifying the locations of? Yep. If there's an easier way to say that, but I can't think of it right now. Affordable housing. That's just. And what I want to say with the harmony of nature, getting back to Erica's point, is um, impervious surfaces. So uh, I'll say lessening. Yeah. Lessening is not a great word, but of uh, impervious surfaces. Yeah. That's a really good point. 
David, when we talk about affordable housing, I also think um, not just the building wealth, but also um, de declustering our affordable housing. Because right right now it, it you know it is clustered in particular areas of the county. And the converse of that is called mixed income housing. That's what you really want is mixed income housing. Right. That that doesn't happen unless it's required by right. developers to do right. it. But so many other jurisdictions do require it, and we Agreed. could do it if we wanted to. Right. You also throughout the county. And... No big neighborhoods without small houses too. Right. So, what not? And alternative ways of getting those small houses into communities. What does that mean? Well, I mean, we've, we've had the mother-in-law apartment kind of thing. There are some places where they allow small houses on bigger lots uh, in, in a lot where there is a big house. Uh, like what we've got here. There's actually a piece of legislation in now uh, sponsored by Delegate Bel Castro about about that exact issue. Okay. I mean, they're doing it in on the West Coast, all up and down from Seattle down to uh, Southern California. Is that an ADU uh, legislation? My apologies for not having a. Yeah, it Bel Castro, one word, B E L C A S T R O. Um, I, uh... My Baltimore credentials are not. Yeah. She, uh, she represents flaunt. District 11, but she's um, she currently has a piece of legislation in about those small houses. David, this is Emery. Just want to let you know right. everybody is back to the main lobby. Oh, okay. So everyone's watching us. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so let me unshare this. Uh, folks, I'll just say uh, as I'm closing up, of course, feel free to email me. My email's on the line. But thanks for a really good conversation, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All righty, folks. Well, thanks for everyone for coming back and uh, bearing with the tail end of uh, my my group. Um, we're going to jump right into the reporting um, of these of these conversations. So, Amy, if you want to share your screen. Sure. All right now, enlarge it a little bit so you guys can see it. Um, so, uh, my group went through the, the 3, um, equity. Specific, uh, goals, equitable information to increase the government's transparency by providing communities with actionable data for decision making and to improve access to opportunities. Um, we really did not have any additions to that goal or anything that they, they felt should be changed. Um, so they, um, pretty quickly agreed with that goal and those actions. For equitable engagement. Create new standards for equitable community engagement in order to build strong, sustainable relationships and partnerships with all residents of the county. For this one, uh, we just had a few uh, comments. Number four, um, they noted that it was important uh, to encourage participation uh, as much as we could in all the decision making processes. Um, they liked the idea of this annual check in among agencies to make sure um, that the efforts we were making for engagement were working. Um, or anything that needed to be changed. And they mentioned ab about adding community leaders to number one um, to focus on existing leaders where there's already been trust developed and kind of use that to build upon. For capacity building, uh, which is, you know, increase the capacity of community organizations to encourage collaborative decision making. Um, using an approach that's grounded in inclusion and respects different types of experience and knowledge. Uh, the comments that we had were. Um, about uh, the current community association registration, um, you know, there's boundaries and bylaws required. Um, how would we, if we expanded this um, access to this um, this this association list, um, how would you address social groups that maybe just operate um, on platforms like Facebook and Nextdoor and those types of things? How would you differentiate between the two? How do you, you know, define, I guess, essentially a community association? Um, and then also make sure that there's um, multilingual access to that. So that if you've, you've got a group who, um, you know, needs to access it in a different language, that capacity or that ability is there within that online tool. Um, as we moved on to the um, 
equity elements and other work groups um, for livable built environment. Uh, there were comments, there were comments about the URTL um, and the need for review of the impact of the URTL on segregation in the county. Um, a focus on the existing transportation network and maintenance of that with the quality, um, make sure the quality of what we have already um, encourages use um, and is a nice amenity and not a last resort. Um, there was uh, someone mentioned looking at the current uh, land preservation and rec and parks plan. If there were data indicators there um, that would maybe point to where new locations for parks and recreation areas are needed. Uh, review the use of present open space funding um, and where it's been used in the past um, and, and how that may be um, an, an equity in the county. Existing properties review for first right of refusal from the county for future pocket parks, especially where park access doesn't exist or is scarce. Focus on land use. Um, again, you know, look at the URTL, development policies, zonings, um, so that land use decisions support equitable quality development. Look at underutilized parks and determine better access to those parks or encourage additional development near those parks um, if the land exists. And uh, there was someone who noted the need for indoor soccer or other sports facilities in the county um, because that would provide um, jobs, but also um, year round access to recreation. For harmony with nature, we just had a few comments. Um, better public access to the waterfront and all water resources for residents. Uh, better education and outreach to communities, not only to increase awareness about the natural resources that are out there and why they're important, um, but also information about how to get to those, um, to those areas and how to access them. For healthy community, um, we talked about expansion of transportation between county facilities, uh, facilities that provide services, um, and then connections between those, those facilities and other destination points, specifically for seniors, um, but connections to grocery stores and medical centers. For resilient economy, um, we noted focus on uh, skilled trades and workforce development, developing partnerships with employers who will pay for training for new or prospective employees, developing partnerships with employers and educational institutions, especially high schools, um, so that there are well-defined steps towards employment and accessibility to educational opportunities for training um, so that it's not, you know, just in the daytime if someone has is already working a job and they need to do something at night or on the weekend. For regionalism, um, I think this was our last one, um, just to add to the over overall objective um, to complete the goals of Master Plan 2030 in order to make sure that efforts um, with other jurisdictions are in the best interest of Baltimore County. And I believe that is it from my group. Thanks, Amy. Uh, Gene, do you want to go next? Sure, I'll go next. Let me share my screen. So I want to thank everybody who joined in the discussion. So for the first goal, which is the um, equitable information. Um, they, they agreed to the goal. Some of the um, actions um, that I received feedback on was the number two, create an online interactive tool. So um, they said it's not only about creating the, um, the tool, but we also have to make it accessible to many people. So we have to make sure that um, you know, people have access to internet, broadband, um, that it, it needs to be more than just an online access. On the second goal, um, on the equitable engagement, some of the feedbacks I receive um, include the number seven, uh, where we say to establish an annual meeting among county agencies. So they think that it should not just be limited to county agent agencies, but we should also have citizens and business representation to those um, to those meetings. Um, so they know that their ideas are being incorporated in policies and decisions. So the number two which is to develop a policy that reflects how communities prefer to be engaged. Um, they think that we have to um, communicate with individual groups to determine why, um, you know, what their best methods of, of contacts or communication is. So this will actually be the strategy for, um, for this action. And then also we um, had another feedback about um, using some translation services in, in public meetings just to attract people that are not speaking um, English or speaking another language. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
for the um for the equitable capacity building uh we receive some feedback on the grants programs that we are offering that we are proposing um they said that in order to be equitable we need to encourage um the reporting to be not as extensive uh, we have to make it easy uh, for the community to apply to these grants um so we have to also not only give them the opportunity to submit by online uh, submit online may also submit by mail and also um, accessibility to encourage many people to apply so we should have um, the language barrier make sure that we provide maybe applications in other language than um, other than than just English on the number two which was um, again on the um, grant program to support community organization with small one-time initiatives. There were some um, questions about what small and one-time mean. Um, they think that it should be more than, than, than one time and it should not be small. Um, it should be frequent, and, but then um, they agree that the amount of money will determine the frequency and the, um, and the, and the extent of the grant. And on the number, on number six, hire an equity and inclusion planner. Um, they did say that this is a great um, action, but that planner needs to be local. Um, and then wanted to also know if that person will be limited to just planning or would that person be also interacting with other agencies. On number five, which is the um, Citizen Planning Institute, um, they said that this specific action has been you know used by other jurisdictions but it has a lot of challenges that um there's a lot of significant time and efforts by staff and that we need to um uh, review other places to just see what type of suggestions they have in making um the program easier for us and make it more sustainable so on the second part of um of of this where we um reviewing the um, equity objective on livable built environment um, for the affordable housing they said that we need to provide legal assistance to those in legacy housing to obtain clear title um, another thought was the rent issues they're still accelerating and we need to investigate and assist renters in vulnerable areas um, they will also talk about having um, a better planning of ada compliant for affordable housing and then for the homelessness, we need to also provide halfway housing to just help them get out of the street. For harmony with nature, uh, some of the objective equity objective that we should um, we should include uh, include reducing criminal criminalization of homelessness. That we need to avoid placing low loitering signs in public places, so that um, you know homeless homeless people can feel inviting to public places uh, we need also to distribute trees green places and gardens equitably and they would like to see more food trees in public places for healthy community uh, there should be greater access to affordable mental health services um, especially for the veterans and the first responders we should have an equal for the, for the equal access to good education, um, they said that we also need to attract more teachers um, by increasing their pay rate. Um, and then someone said that we need to include senior centers in the equity objective. Resilient economy. Uh, the, um, in the objective of equitable access to good jobs and a fair distribution of the benefits of the growing county, they said that we need to um, have a fair investment of the benefit into all communities. Um, they also talk about having mixed use uh, housing between business, businesses and housing. So uh, we need to revisit the mixed use zoning to allow not only inclusionary housing, but also have those vertical mixed use buildings where, for example, the first floor is retailed and beyond. Um, and the upper floors are residential to have more of this type of building. For responsible regionalism, um, they said that we need to work together in order to make this happen. So we need to have a better communication between um, the county and the surrounding jurisdiction. Um, and they will also talk about the um, 
the planner, the equity planner. Um, they said that the planner is responsible, will be responsible for monitoring initiatives and partnerships and um, ensuring that the appropriate parties are involved. Um, but then also not only didn't, didn't they say that this position, the, the, the person needs to be local, but this position also needs to be a senior position planner um, because we need to have someone um, that will be able to affect change. Otherwise he will be ignored, he or she will be ignored. And I believe that's all I have. Fantastic, thanks G'day, that was really great. Uh, Bill, if you wanna go next. Sure, let me share my screen, but I'll also start with, I had a fairly unique group with mostly county employees, um, one of our uh, local land use attorneys and did have one uh, member of the public in the group. Um, so a few folks that were kind of a little bit more versed in kind of how things have operated in the county. Um, so also lots of uh, similar comments that uh, Gene talked about with uh, looking at ways to come up with uh, approaches other than virtual um, as we move forward with communities, um, as well as looking at ways to come up with uh, addressing communities that have speak other languages. So very similar comments as well. Share my screen, try to get through fairly quickly. Uh, so for goal one, equitable information, everyone was um, did agree um, for action number two. Everyone did, agreed, um, but did feel as though that both one and two were related and perhaps could kind of be combined and streamline a little bit. Um, all, the, all the info should be made available online, ensuring that visual and those with the visual and mobility impairments are also addressed in, in, the, in the actions, um, as well as those speaking multiple languages. Uh, however, there was an interesting comment that, you know, is there that possibility of sharing this type of information publicly, could that be detrimental to certain communities um, if developers were to look at it, you know, create that possibility of the developers not wanting to invest in those areas. Um, so that was kind of an interesting comment. Um, again, equitable engagement, everyone agreed uh, for action number one, uh, kind of same thing. Every, if everything is virtual, that could certainly cause issues, you know, eventually we'll have to go back to face to face and other methods other than other than online. So those other methods should be explored and implemented. Uh, number two, again, branch out uh, to other virtual platforms other than WebEx. Some felt those that Zoom was a little bit more um, in use uh, out in the public world rather than WebEx more accessible um, and there's others that just may not want to be virtual at all uh, number three um, they felt this was being done now um, but how do we get uh, more people involved number four uh, they did agree but felt as though that there were many that would not read anything ahead of time number five uh, you know just the fact that Everybody transitioning to virtual environment as and with COVID has impacted participation. The like ways for hybrid conferencing uh, could potentially be a, a solution. There was questions of you know how is this really related to equity? They don't have the technology; it's really hurting them more. Number six uh, agreed, but incorporate some of the previous actions, felt that those repetitive, uh, engage in ways that su suits the, their community. Equitable capacity building, everyone agreed. Uh, action number one, uh, everyone agreed, but need to come up with better ways to keep community groups up to date and add new groups. 
uh, maybe keeping some of that information, that up-to-date information on sites such as My Neighborhood that can also kind of help create a little bit more uh, of a connection between other parties outside of the county and the community. I know that's something that we've talked about and struggled with over the years with how to keep all this up to date. Number two, uh, agreed, but maybe look at a ways to establishing an official program that incentivizes that um, action. Uh, number three, uh, they did agree, but felt as though that two and three are similar. Uh, perhaps looking at kind of a, a central web page somewhere on a county's website to uh, channel folks into keeping their community information up to date. Uh, number five, everyone agreed, um, and just there was a comment that Baltimore City has implemented a citizen planning institute and kind of look at ways and lessons learned uh, from their experience. So moving into the uh, draft equity object objectives for li livable built environment, um, some ways were to create more awareness. Uh, many county citizen, citizens are not in favorable of affordable housing. Um, you know, perhaps need to educate the public is what, what does that really mean and of the requirements uh, that the county has. Um, you know, the term workforce housing um, was used. A lot of folks typically will immediately associate things like section eight with affordable housing. Um, there are a lot of communities out there that are opposed to that being in their area. Uh, also looking at updating uh, zoning reg regulations that can better fit uh, this in two areas, out, especially in areas outside of the hurdle. Uh, harmony with nature, uh, there was a okay, uh, example given that DNR is implementing now where they have a some type of mobile uh, center or education center um, that is run by bilingual uh, park ranger staff, and that has really helped to reach out into, especially uh, communities that speak Spanish, get them involved into in the uh, what's going on in the parks. Healthy community <clears throat> uh, addressed through greater focus on uh, TODs, mixed use development. Uh, you know, on ways to make services e more easily accessible. Uh, need to increase uh, density to support, build up urban cores to preserve um, green spaces in between developed areas, um, ways to get mark stations in schools, ways to get to mark station in schools that do not rely on, uh, on a car, looking at ways to be able to get there on bikes. Um, this could also apply to the Re resilient economy theme. Um, it's all really connected. Uh, just that greater need for alternate transportation. A resilient economy, looking ways to diversify land uses. Need a system that supports or permits uh, more mixed use development. Um, someone made the comment that the PUD process is a hindrance and that needs to be reevaluated. Um, also, that the zoning regulations are out, are outdated and they need to be brought up to date. Again, more support for mixed use. Um, looking at Metro Center as a as a case study, and that was it. Then we got kicked out before we could get to the last one. Great, right. thanks, Bill. Austin. Uh... You want to go next? All right. Thank you to my group. We had a we had a very small group, very intimate conversation. Uh, a lot of agreement with 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 most of these goals. Um, the idea that 
Um, equity, equity can also refer to income levels. The URTL causes uh, segregation. So one thing that we could potentially map as uh, in an equity atlas would be an income breakdown by zip code. Somebody pointed out that all this data exists in some form um, via the census. Um, though it is, is it is difficult to capture, and it's a matter of properly uh, mapping everything and putting them into the right context. So, for instance, like the avail availability of, of building lots might be very difficult for the average citizen to to access. As far as equitable engagement, um, kind of distilled down to, we need to fit, develop a way to inform the uninformed through simple uh, kind of meeting them meeting them where they're at methods simple as passing out flyers and handouts through through the school system on a regular basis and the the idea that the average citizen doesn't know what's going on and is therefore missing out on meetings that could that um, might be beneficial or relevant to them and for uh, capacity building again lots of agreement and um, a suggestion that came out of this was sending a, a, a different than different different than sending uh, newsletters or communication through the school, but more sending a newsletter out to community organizations and CDCs just to give them an, an update on what's going on in Baltimore County. We move into build, uh, livable built environment. The goal uh, we see saw the goal is as mixed race, mis, mixed income, diverse communities. And if you support that, then one thing that um, everyone was was in agreement with across the board is, is pre-kindergarten for all. So focusing on education and uh, infrastructure, expand, expanding uh, access to to renewable energy and, and solar energy via tax credits or, or subsidies, knowing that solar can be easily integrated into existing communities, and there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, my group felt that every roof, every parking lot should have a solar panel on it. And we spent a lot, a lot of time talking about parking lots and how they're just a terrible land use and they're um, an imper impermeable surface, creating runoff, in, um, worsening the heat island effect. So no more parking lots. That was, that was tied in with um, build environment and with, with harmony with nature. Uh, with healthy, healthy community, it really came down to information about and knowledge of um, accessibility to home-based care, resources for, for the homeless, food giveaways, et cetera, and information regarding programs for substance abuse and expanding access and just getting the inform information out there about uh, apprenticeships and job training programs. <clears throat> and one thing that's that's already that's happening, but it's it's an ongoing process is anticipating cycles of population growth and decline when older populations need uh, need um, retirement homes or or different services. And whereas younger families and populations are moving in, they need uh, they're looking for affordable homes and and school and better schools. And so we that's an ongoing process and it's a complicated one, but we need to keep doing keep doing that. And then for responsible regionalism, we kind of tie that in talking about with about the economy as well. Um, focusing on improving connectivity and, and bike paths. And somebody brought up the a complaint that the county just doesn't have a a countywide uh, bicycle network. We need to we should build one. And there was a lot of focus on. How can we use re regionalism to improve job 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 training and skin skill training, for instance, job training facilities that could serve mul um, multiple counties and jurisdictions, and this would this would improve economic well being and is sort of the foundational thing that needs to happen for for communities to to exist and and to develop. And uh, one group member noted that there is a huge demand for skilled labor, and these jobs are going currently going unfilled. And so as a result, employers have to go out of the county to fill them. So it's just a huge, huge opportunity to to teach people um, 
in de in de in demand skills that uh, aren't going aren't going away. All right, yeah, that was that was it. Sweet, thank you, Austin. That was great. Uh, April, if you want to go next. Right. Um, so to go through some of the things that we talked about uh, as it related to equitable information, uh, people generally agree with the goal. Uh, some of the things that were noted was that uh, community associations could be like contacted directly since the county already has a directory um, right now, mostly um, word of mouth is how people um, learn about different initiatives from the county. Um, also, like not understanding or knowing when planning board meetings are and stuff is kind of unknown to the community members at large and making that a little bit more transparent. Um, community listings can be kept up to date um, and not that was something that was said could also be um, a responsibility of communities themselves so they can update it on a yearly basis or something like that. Um, and then also planning projects are not easily easily accessible on a planning website. So just making our website itself a little bit more um, easy to navigate. Um, and then also looking at different tools like next door or even a county map where we can kind of see ongoing projects and stuff. Just looking at different ways uh, to see data being utilized. When it comes to equitable engagement, um, one of the things that was brought up was to consider the needs of individuals without homes as well as those with disabilities um, in those different populations of individuals. Uh, for number seven, we talked about expanding the concept to not only just be county agencies, but also residents and other groups um, that could be allowed to kind of interact with these different agencies to let them know their needs, let them know how they can better uh, interact with each other to approve, to um, accomplish different goals. Um, and just some general comments that came up from this section was uh, sometimes the time and format of meetings can hinder people from being able to participate. So just being able to be thoughtful about that. And then also currently some of the meetings that are held are uh, very restrictive in nature. So, um, having to sign in at a certain time or the amount of time that they can utilize for comments instead of it being like something where people are able to spontaneously speak out about their experiences or things that they're um, uh, observing. When it came to equitable capacity building, we talked about uh, one of the things that came up was like not only seeing community organizations as the end all be all for being able to identify what the community needs or like uh, be able to fully represent a community. So um, having that understanding, um, needing to kind of work more on a local basis, so not just consider uh, community associations being the only way that we communicate with people, but uh, what ways can we it be kind of like um, more in those communities uh, physically um, and then also just considering how can we look at capacity building overall uh, so like where aren't community associations present what affinity groups or interest groups are not represented um, and then also uh, some things hinder ability uh, of organizations to be active so whether they can't find an act um, consistent place to meet and things like that. Um, and so doing a gap analysis can help us uh, better realize uh, the needs of different communities. Um, in this one, we also talked about um, one of the roles of the inclusion planner being able to kind of make things a little bit more comprehend comprehensible and available to people. Um, and then some things about creatively reusing spaces. So like if senior citizens are uh, senior, uh, centers are closed on the weekends. What ways can we like reuse those spaces on the weekend and collaborate with different people to make those accessible? Um, a conference or meeting annually to like actually teach uh, individuals and community members on how to start community organizations and what makes uh, those successful. Um, one of the suggestions was also an ombudsman for community associations. So if there's different concerns or things that they would like to um, uh, petition or file grievances about, like having a point person for that. Uh, then also looking at a uh, nonprofit or uh, ways to assist communities, um, very similar to the neighborhood association. I meant the neighborhood design center, like Baltimore County and Prince George's County has, Baltimore City, sorry, and Prince George's County has. Um, some of the things that came from this when it came to livable built environment, considering a free transit system, um, that'll be like a regional effort. 
um, with harmony with nature. A, a big thing was like talking about like zip codes and things that we could uh, really pay more close attention to, like tree canopies, um, the grime, or like uh, cleanliness of different areas associated with that, and then also health. Then also um, uh, putting different regulations in for different developers if they're using, uh, if they're developing with a lot of impervious spaces. So what can they do in order to offset some of that by like um, increasing the amount of trees that are also considered with that project? Um, identify resilient hubs um, to make um, that can connect to like uh, different are areas when it comes to like different disasters. Um, healthy communities, we talked about, um, uh, someone saw like um, a statistic of like um, apartment fires occurring in um, um, less affluent neighborhoods and looking at code regulations or something in that area uh, to see if there's a correlation. Uh, there needs to be an urgency with food deserts uh, with some of the things that were mentioned. Um, and then also just like basic facilities need to be considered and so not just uh, food, but then also like um, basic health needs, like a pharmacy, or access to personal hygiene supplies, uh, considering the walkability is something that was mentioned when, especially when it came to um, the design review process, uh, ensuring that walkability was uh, at the forefront. Uh, and then there was a comment about there's seemingly um, a disconnect um, with like transit access and walkability and like the MTA slash um, uh, Baltimore County connection that's there, so needs to improve that relationship. And then um, when it comes to resilient economy, uh, looking at uh, being more deliberate when it comes to, comes to uh, development that happens. Um, one of the comments was that like a food desert has occurred um, because uh, we wasn't more conscious about what was happening uh, as change occurred. Access to transit um, needs to be considered. And so if we're talking about getting people access to jobs and stuff, uh, ensuring that we're looking more closely at intersections and pedestrian safety, um, state roads uh, that run through the county need to have better regulations. Um, some of the other things, it's, it seems to be easy for like development of food and gas stations. And so uh, looking at reconsidering what type of development is easily occurring uh, in different um, areas. Uh, and then also looking at innovative reuse of current uh, buildings and infrastructure to um, reuse as affordable housing options. Uh, and last one with responsible regionalism, looking at different um, uh, network plans in particular, like the green network plan and how those should be a seamless connection with city and county uh, objectives. Uh, and then also looking at like something very similar to the Baltimore Metro Council, where currently they only focus on transportation. What are ways that we can continue to um, get different uh, agencies and personnel connected to kind of know how to make these seamless connections regionally? What's the last thing? Great. Thanks, April. That was fantastic. All right, I'll wrap us out here uh, very quickly. Uh, I do want to say a big thank you to my group. I thought we had a really nice conversation. Uh, that is the wrong document. There we go. Okay. Why is that in the header? All right. All right, so I've highlighted a few um, of our main uh, conversations that we had, and just to get through this quickly, um, everything in red is the community comments, but just to talk about just a few topics. Am I? Yes, okay. Uh, so the first one here is, uh, we should consider an exchange for data rather than just a platform with this online um, mm -hmm. sort of thinking about it in more of a, this is a, really a back and forth. There is no one side that is more that is more important than the other, the community and the county government are just as big a partners in this. And I thought that was a really valuable addition to this uh, this thought. Uh, down here, this uh, idea of additional action, um, considering social justice and racial equity impact statements um, for all the projects, similar to the way uh, Montgomery County uses this, uh, MOCO for, uh, for the locals, um, perhaps considering uh, this efforts in terms of budgeting instead of what they do is really for legislation, and if we did that in the way that we um, we budget for different projects, so I thought that was a great addition. Scrolling down here, um, with our community meetings, we should really consider more focus group conversation styles, kind of like this one, 
um, more than the traditional podium public fo forum where someone gets up and has their two minutes to speak and then someone says that was nice to hear thank you sir and then you sit down um, and then on top of that that model being translated to a lot of the county council level stuff current uh, when virtual has really a um, county county residents haven't been able to see each other's faces when they're uh, presenting to county council recently, there's no um, order that's made available, so people don't know when they're supposed to give their input. They just have to wait to hear their name. Uh, so just making sure those are a bit easier for folks while we're in this uh, COVID period of uh, virtual engagement. Again, um, just having that feedback loop, uh, similar to what we were talking, what we ended up talking about with county council, just making sure that when community members give their engagement, there is that immediate feedback um, that we've heard this and this is how this was uh, taken into case or taken into consideration. And that's one thing, for example, sending back these sorts of notes back to community members. And then this was a really good um, suggestion. BCPS has uh, started publishing simply worded summaries of every board meeting they've had. And if we could start doing that for some of our commissions and even county council, just to give people an easily shareable um, summary of what happened at a meeting um, for folks who just want to get the word out. Um, this is easy enough to use on social media, but even more importantly, it's easy enough to translate to other languages. Continuing to scroll down here. Um, one thing when we were talking about this list of connecting with community organizations, uh, Councilman Potoka actually came in to say, one thing we need to do is be proactive as the county government. We need to be sure we're reaching out to these community organizations uh, rather than just waiting for them to uh, respond to us or waiting for them to come to us with the new information, new changes. We should be making connections at the very least every year to make sure when elections occur in these organizations that changes are made. And down. Um, this was something we talked about quite a bit. Uh, often community associations, they're not really a even a representative group of their neighborhood. Um, but we can help community associations a lot of times. They're um, older members who have been there for quite some time. And helping them uh, in this, in, as their communities transition to more diverse, as the whole county does, helping community groups uh, work through that transition and make sure they incorporate more diversity is going to be a really important task for the county government to undertake. Similarly, um, one thing that came uh, right, we talked about PTAs are really where young parents are engaging and then from PTAs, they shift to their community associations once their uh, their children graduate. So if we could really get in front of that process and connect community associations with PTAs, we might be able to have a much more diverse uh, age wise, at least um, community association and community organizations more generally. Uh, then again, with the CPI, uh, we had some good comments that people were familiar with the city's effort, that it's really great and it is important to build capacity in this next more diverse generation. As right now, a lot of our community organizations are run by people who've been doing it for quite some time. Uh, so if we can make sure we're building capacity in this younger generation, it will by nature also be more diverse. And then this I liked as well, um, this idea of three-hour boot camps that if you can't commit to a full, be, be a member of the CPI, but you want a little more than just a simple video, maybe have like short courses. Um, and then we should put, uh, these should be made available on YouTube as well. And then I'll scroll down just a few thoughts on the equity objectives. Uh, one thing we noticed was we need equitable access to air quality and water quality infrastructure. So that means your internal ventilation for, um, apartment complexes and then the uh, county's water um, water and sewage treatment infrastructure. And then access to information about um, what's happening in development. We had this referred to as the equity of understanding that some communities seem to always know what's going on in their communities and some communities seem to have stuff thrust upon them. So really we should be able to um, balance that out countywide that everyone should know what's going on in their community. Um, every community organization should be informed equally. And then declustering affordable housing, we consider this to be uh, mixed income housing, but really making sure that no big neighborhoods without small houses. I thought that was a great quote. And lastly, um, with the harmony with nature, this last one is just reducing impervious services. Some communities seem to have way more parking lots, as another group mentioned. So if we do a good job to do that, uh, reduce that, that'll be a big equity gain. Alrighty.
So I'll stop sharing. Uh, again, thank you to my group. Feel free to reach out to me, of course. Uh, and then I will, Emery, if you could put the PowerPoint back up. Thank you. And then Amy, do you all? Okay. I'm here. Um, so thank you to everyone who um, was able to join us tonight. And I believe um, Councilman Patoka and some someone from his staff was here as well. So we appreciate them attending this evening. Um, the next meeting uh, and the last of the seven uh, for this phase um, will be Monday, February 7th, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And we'll be touching on the harmony with nature goals and actions. For interwoven equity. Um, again, you can always go to the Baltimore County MD.gov slash master plan 2030 website. Um, we've posted the goals and actions there. If you want to go back and look at them. There's also an online survey that was posted today that will be up for the next 7 days. So you can go in and provide additional input on um, the goals and actions here tonight. Um, there's also a section to add, you know, more comments or new ideas. Um, and we also will post this meeting recording. Uh, and the slide presentation as well. We've also, in addition, uh, we've, we've been um, posting the notes from the, the breakout sessions. So we'll also um, post those for this meeting too. Um, so that is all that I have for this evening. Again, thank you all for joining us. Um, you can always email me at masterplan at barmercountymd.gov too. Um, there's a lot of ways to reach us. And if you've got uh, any ideas or thoughts, you know, we're happy to hear them. So thank you all very much. And we look forward to seeing many of you again on the 7th. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Sure. Emery, did you get the chat? I think we had a few comments. Great. Well, thanks everyone. I thought that went really well. I um, did not expect to have the councilman in there and then he just kind of pops in. I'm like, I know that voice. <laughs> Yeah, I think you guys did a good job. I know that, um, you know, we were trying to cover a lot of information in a very short amount of time and uh, make sure folks weren't, um, you know, thrown too far off track on any of the topics, but um, it seems like everyone was able to get through almost everything um, in their work groups. I don't know if anybody had any.